Yemeni women, born in Uganda and raised in places that tourists rarely visit. My childhood stories end with, and then I fell off an elephant, or that's when the American ambassador's dog took me down. Um, the experiences that have shaped my life are typically hard to relate to. From a marriage at 17, three children by the age of 25, two civil wars, scud missiles that kept on coming, to a new life as new immigrants in Canada, where we didn't know anybody and we didn't understand the cultural landscape. From being a stay-at-home mom who didn't have a degree or a career to finding confidence and finding the entrepreneurial spirit that I didn't know I had. Between then and now are a thousand and one stories and lessons that I've learned along the way. And I'd like to share some of them with you today. So I went to the international school. Um, I was the only Yemeni student and the only scholarship student in a private school for the children of all the ambassadors and all the expats. And I didn't really fit. Um, I tried to, I worked really hard at that, and my new Western behavior was, um, was met with disapproval from my family. And shor shortly thereafter, I found myself in an all-girls Arabic school, where I didn't speak Arabic, I didn't dress like anybody, I didn't know anybody. And, and yet again, I was the outsider looking in, and I didn't fit there either. I spent many years of my life trying to blend in. I did not want to stand out, and I didn't want to be different. I changed my behavior, my accent, the way I dressed, my thoughts. I squeezed myself into a tiny little box, and I was ecstatic when I finally fit. From Oscar Wilde, my great mistake, the fault for which I can't forgive myself, is that one day I seized my obstinate pursuit of my own individuality. So back to the goats for a minute. They were wedding presents when I was 17, and we fed them to our 2,000 wedding guests over the course of a week-long wedding. <laughs> and for the longest time, I never wanted to tell anybody that story because everybody else got Tupperware. <laughs> but now I know better, and I can take pride in my differences. And if nothing else, I have a heck of a lot of good stories to tell. Fall in love. So we moved to Canada in 1996, and life was so drastically different for me back then. I had no ambition beyond the four walls of my house. I was my father's daughter, my husband's wife, and my children's mother, and I was bored out of my mind. I really wanted to do something, and my now ex-husband said, who will hire you? And so I stormed off to the mall for an afternoon of retail therapy, and I came home with a job at Danier Leather. And that minimum wage job was where I found my first inkling of what was to become a career that I just could not resist. I realized that reading people was an art, that you can motivate and change behavior. I was hooked on marketing in its simplest form. I outgrew Danier pretty quickly, and wanting more, I went back to school, graduating with a Bachelor of Design in Visual Communications at the age of 32 and with three children in tow. But I had found what I loved, that hunger that I could not shake. It's what gets me out of bed in the morning and keeps me up at night. Without it, my company is only a company, and my job is only a job. I would encourage anybody embarking on an entrepreneurial venture to find the one thing that you're passionate about. It could be anything, even banking. Um, <laughs> So I graduated, and I realized that I was far too stubborn to work for anybody else, and four years later, with a fire burning in my belly, I started Foundry. 